हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर अगेन डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते पीडियाट्रिशियन एंड पीडियाट्रिक इंटेंसिविस्ट फ्रॉम पनवेल मुंबई महाराष्ट्र टुडे वी आर अगेन गोइंग इनटू द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ आवर स्टीयर सीरीज व्हिच इज फॉर्म बाय डॉक्टर आवर डेल बेलवेट टीचर डॉक्टर वाईके अमडेकर सर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट शॉक क्लिनिकल असेसमेंट शॉक एज यू अंडरस्टैंड is nothing but the demand and supply imbalance what tissue demand the cardiolo circulatory system cannot provide mainly oxygen and the nutrients for various reasons and shock can be of four etiologies the hypovolemic shock wherein the intravascular volume is depleted thus the preload on the heart and hence the stroke volume of the heart is reduced it can be because of cardiogenic because of myocardial dysfunction due to various causes it can be congenital heart getting out of cardiac failure it can be myocarditis can be septic myocarditis causing cardiac dysfunction it can be mal distributed shock whatever blood optimally pumped by the heart is not being distributed properly into circulation i'm going to come to that in the subsequent part of my talk and last the volume is adequate heart is functioning well volume be distributed well but there is some obstruction to the cardiac output maybe because of cardiac tamponade maybe because of pneumothorax maybe because of left ventricular outlet obstruction due to various causes and then the blood is not reaching the tissue ultimately blood is not reaching the tissue and the baby uh, tissues are ischemic and hypoxic that's what is and that secondary to cardio circulatory system defect is shock the clinical evaluation can help diagnose shock and recognize probable underlying cause but for that we need to understand the some certain pathophysiologic basis of it we need to understand body's compensatory mechanism to understand the clinical picture so when there is any shock like situation wherein the body is not receiving tissue oxygen nutrients there are some changes which will happen the body will try to protect the vital organs by diverting the blood from not so vital towards the vital organs so what i mean to say in the kind of a priority wise brain is the most important priority then the heart then maybe lungs then maybe liver kidneys then muscle then then could be gi and finally maybe muscles and skin so the first one to get compromised is skin and the muscles so on a clinical manifestation the first parameter will be tachycardia which is body's first compensation to increase kind of a minute volume of output but secondly the blood will be diverted away from the skin so we'll have cold extremities we'll have tachycardia followed by cold extremities then delayed capillary refill time and the periphery is becoming cold as compared to central so that the blood is diverted to vital organs then it could be compromise of the gi so you typically have seen the dengue shock early presentation with abdominal pain or a nephrotic child who comes with hypovolemia coming with abdominal pain because the intestines are getting ischemic here then it could be decreased urine output then you can detect mild tachypnea in this child with hypoxia that is because lungs are not being perfused finally you may see the dysfunctions in liver and then there could be myocardial failure at the end it could be brain dysfunction and this same kind of algorithm we'll see in all protocolized shock and when i say that you will see similar kind of presentation in hypovolemic cardiogenic or obstructive shock but when it comes to septic shock where there is a circulatory failure itself because of the autonomic system failure you have mal distribution this particular algorithm may not be followed and you may see a child where he may be drowsy but maintaining extremity is warm or he may be seeing a child who is passing urine well but is looking hypoxic and tachypneic so that kind of algorithm of progressive diversion of blood from not so vital to vital is lost in case of mal distributive shock that makes it very interesting and difficult as well and that also makes it probably the commonest cause of delayed recognition in case of mal distributive shock and this kind of shock is seen classically in a septic shock occasionally in anaphylactic and neurogenic shock following the brain trauma there is severity categorization as well of the shock wherein as i said uh, uh, if, if with all the body compensatory mechanism the body will try to maintain the mean arterial pressure diverting blood to the vital organ so till late you may see all other signs of shock till still maintaining the blood pressure of the patient so you may see a capillary refill delayed extremities becoming cold 
and even the urine output dropping but the blood pressure maintained and this is called as normotensive or compensatory shock and once the blood pressure drops that is called as hypotensive shock which exponentially increases the mortality rate so if you are having a peripheral pulses weak and central palpable with a blood pressure maintained probably you are on a compensated shock but you got both the pulses weak or kind of lost and blood pressure not being recorded only central pulses weak feebly palpable this is hypotensive shock which carries a huge mortality so when it comes to clinical assessment of this extrapolating this pathophysiological knowledge into clinical presentation you perhaps whenever you get this patient they are sick so you need to stabilize them and you have to analyze them on the als guideline which says immediate assessment primary assessment and secondary assessment where in immediate assessment is to recognize whether there is immediate threat to life and this child this is recognized on the pat triangle which is cbc the consciousness breathing and color of which color represents the hemodynamic status or the shock status which in case of shock patient will become grayish color mottling of the skin etc you need to stabilize this child first before progressing further to the primary evaluation which tells you which of the vital systems are under most important compromise so that need to be stabilized first so you will have airway and breathing coming up front in the priority then comes circulation as per as circulation is concerned we are going maybe first as i said already is a tachycardia will be the first manifestation and very late presentation will be a bradycardia which is just before the cardio circulatory arrest then comes the peripheral pulses so this child in the shock will come with tachycardia then comes the peripheral pulses will become weak as compared to central pulses then you are looking at the clinical parameters or markers of perfusion deficiency to various tissues and as i said the first one to fail is skin so that will come with a delayed capillary refill time anything more than 3 seconds or 4 seconds is to be taken as significant as a marker of hemodynamic compromise there could be periphery is becoming cold and you can have a demarcation or a line from foot to the proximal part that's towards the core or body and then move your finger the dorsum of the finger uh, recognizing the temperature coming from periphery foot towards maybe knees and towards the hip and you find out line of demarcation of cold and warmth and this can be a kind of a monitoring parameter subsequently even for recognition of deteriorating shock or improving shock and if this demarcation line moves proximally that means shock is deteriorating if that line moves distally that is a marker that is shock is recovering so this core to temperature difference is very important then comes a decrease urine output a marker of uh, renal compromise which ideally should be more than 0.5 ml per kg uh, to maintain as normal ideal it should be more than 2 ml per kg anything less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour will be marker of a shock then comes finally a cns perfusion which will be monitored under perfusion will be kind of a shown by deteriorating sensorium which clinically can be done by avpu score the alertness the responsive to voice responsive to pain and unresponsive those are kind of staging which can be correlated with even glasgow coma scale when a detailed monitoring is possible and last to see fail is the blood pressure that is child becoming hypotensive so mind you blood pressure is the last to crash far before that all the systems are crashed so when the blood pressure is also crashed that is hypotensive shock and prior to that you may have initial 3 4 finding positive but blood pressure maintained that's a normotensive shock and then following that you will be seeing the effect of this hemodynamic compromise on the respiratory as well as neurological system in the primary assessment which completes your d that is the disability part of neurologic of your uh, pat uh, of your uh, system and then you will be going subsequently on the detail history now if the patient is sick in hypotensive shock management should start before or while doing detail clinical evaluation once shock is diagnosed and optimally stabilized then you know go probably to know the cause of it and as i already mentioned hypovolemic shock classically will be seen either due to water loss from the body in case of gastroenteritis or it could be traumatic blood loss or kind of volume loss mild distributive shock slightly difficult to recognize common causes being septic shock anaphylactic shock and neurogenic shock it can be diagnosed from the background history setting and non sequential features as i already mentioned in my initial pathophysiological part of it cardiogenic shock is very important because here in the management part you won't be giving a lot of fluids unlike the rest three parts of the shock so we need to recognize this where you will be getting disproportionate tachycardia clinical cardiomegaly muffled heart sounds liver may be large in a bigger child you may see basal crepitations all features of cardiac failure followed by cardiogenic shock uh, will be 
seen in this child. So that need to be recognized upfront. Of course, in this case also, there could be a component of hypovolemia. So a small volume of 2 to 5 ml per kg can be pushed in the initial part of the management, but subsequently quickly get into cardiac inotropic drug. Obstructive shock, again, commonly missed because people completely overlook it. So typically a dengue shock, which is hypovolemic, people keep on pushing fluids and child becomes refractory to that. Here, we need to understand the child may be leaking into pericardial cavity causing obstruction or it could be a pleural fluid which is massively filled up and giving rise to obstruction. So that to do we recognize. In the olden days, we must have lost many patients due to this. But in today's era where we monitor most of these patients on point of care ultrasound, we don't miss it. We pick it up early and we definitely notice. So clinically, we need to consider this as a possibility in many in few of the patients who become refractory shock kind of thing. The time taken to revival of vital is important in all pediatric emergencies and that's far more important in case of pediatric shock. Earlier you revive, earlier you maintain the tissue perfusion, better is outcome. Later you take it, obviously poor is outcome. Treatment should start when, even when there is a strong suspect of shock. So at times you may be starting empirically when you are in doubt, especially in septic shock, it sometimes becomes difficult to recognize it early and there you quickly get into small bolus of fluid or maybe inotropism early. And then while you're doing a lab evaluation to surrogate or kind of uh, support your diagnosis. Evaluation for recognition continues even while early resuscitation steps in. It's a very dynamic process. You might have treated initially, but again after some time it deteriorates, you re-evaluate, you find the child is again going into shock stage. This may be because of ongoing fluid capillary loss. This may be because of vasoplasia which is increasing or decreasing. Or this may be because of myocardial dysfunction coming up once you start giving fluid boluses or ongoing septic process. So shock is a dynamic process. It's not that you are diagnosed, you treated and everything becomes all right. You treated, you resuscitated, it is stabilized and again you may deteriorate. So this kind of patient need to be evaluated, re-evaluated, re-evaluated again and again till the time he is finally totally stable. So once you resuscitate and you need to give certain when you are managing, I think as a clinician, you must know what to do early. So obviously, they require oxygen by non-rebreathing mask. When you confirm it's as, a, as, as kind of a shock in this patient, you have to take two big bore needles. You may be giving, collecting his initial metabolic sample, the sugar, the calcium, the blood culture, the lactates, the ABGs, and give a small bolus of fluid, 5 to 10 ml. Nowadays, the old olden days of 20 ml per kg is lost. It's only 5 to 10 ml and reuses it kind of re-evaluate regularly. So the further management goes accordingly. Of course, while doing so, you definitely ensure that he is not having myocardial dysfunction so that further extra fluids can be avoided and you get into inotropism. Sometimes the shock may be have multiple components, not to forget. It's not, not kind of exact compartment. In the septic shock, you have multiple components, the hypovolemia, the myocardial dysfunction, the maldistribution and sometimes even obstructive shock coming up in that. So we need to be recognized that multiple component and addressing to them accordingly. So friends, to summarize, shock is a common pediatric emergency. Early recognition is key to success and recognizing cause of shock is possible clinically, definitely. And earlier you recognize, earlier you kind of resuscitate and stabilize the patient, always better is the outcome. Thank you very much.